touch base real quick about what's going on today. So we have the field trip, it's taffy. We have um, 88 shipping orders. I decided to do a little team huddle this morning because I could feel the stress building. We had this field trip coming. We had 88 orders to get out. Pete was starting to get very panicky. And so I was just trying to get everybody organized. Um, I didn't want Pete to lose his cool and I didn't want Dane to disappear for the day. So I was just trying to make sure we all had a good plan together to get things done. So Dane, I know you like to go upstairs, but we're gonna keep you down here. Cause that's where I'm best used. Becca's, I mean, uh, Erica's gonna let you know when she's yeah. ready for you. So the huddle, so this is the first huddle we've ever done before, where there actually might seem like there's a plan at the Sweet Pea, but it was a, it was a, uh, it was a, it was a worthy huddle cause it was the middle of Valentine's season. We had lots of orders to get out. So Allison gathered the crew, the team, and uh, we had to, uh, uh, just talk about the goals for the day. And so that's what we did. And uh, yeah, normally I do like going upstairs so I don't have to be in the fray of uh, the chaos, the control chaos here. But um, yeah, I do what I'm told, so. All right, great, break. Go team! Woo. You're a leader. Uh, let's, do let's do it. Dane, I mean, come on. It's scary that they would send that out. That's not a full bag. I don't remember the scale. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I just, that's what she said. Look. If you can't measure it, don't do it. Eric, is this what you meant? <laughs> well, at least use the other one as an example. No. Okay. That's like half of a bag. He won't hey. learn if we don't make him redo it. Allison said, Al, look at this. Look at this bag. Is this how you pack? Your, your bags? And I looked at it, I was like, that's half of a bag. What's that about half of a bag? When we package things here, we try to use a scale. Um, on that particular day, the battery had died on the scale. We were in a hurry, so we were just packaging. Um, but I, you can use some common sense to look at the bag that's gonna be next to it on the shelf. And it really doesn't serve anybody any purpose to pack a bag half full. Dane sometimes likes to take shortcuts, so, you know, it's important to, uh, educate him on the proper way of doing it and hope he follows it. Um, it's a technique I've learned with my nine-year-old and so I try to utilize it here at work whenever possible with, with Dane. We need a full bag. He needs to do that over. So the half bag incident, you know, we, we pack a lot of our own products and uh, normally there's a measuring device called a scale. Um, but uh, you know, that particular day, I'm not saying every day, but that particular day there was no uh, available scale and so people were just packing the bags and no one had any idea how many ounces were in each bag. Of course, Allison always likes to, you know, pick me out from the crowd and say, well, what are you doing? What is that? Of course, she'll never say, oh, I forgot to pick up the batteries for the scale and we don't have a scale as a result. So, um, you know, things happen, so. You always want to put your best foot forward. When you have a bag that looks full on one hand and it's next to one that's half full, of course you know which one the customer is going to pick. And in terms of measuring, you pull, if you don't have a scale available, it gets very busy at times in, in Valentine's Day, and it's very chaotic, but go pull one from the shelf and use that as an example. If it looks like the one on the shelf, then it's passable. If it doesn't, then you need to keep packing. Some of the things that he packs tend to be a little lighter than the, the things that we pack. Um, I saw him make a cotton candy just before I got here and it was about half the size of what it should have been. The milkshake looked good though, at least the part that made it in the cup. We started doing field trips um, by chance. Uh, originally we started with birthday parties and the groups kept getting larger and then different types of groups, homeschool groups and just sort of evolved into field trips. And we decided, I guess almost two years ago now, to make a concentrated effort on field trips. So we worked with um, an educator to come up with a curriculum for each field trip um, and really tie the science of candy to the field trips. Field trips are important to this uh, business. Um, it brings people in and it brings uh, people to our place who uh, would not have found it otherwise. And so it's very critical to uh, have that as a piece of our of our business. Um, they can be a lot of fun or they can be uh, not so fun. 
<laughs> it depends on the group, really. Yeah. You guys ready to make taffy? Yeah. Second, third, fourth. How many guys been here before? I recognize somebody. Well, what are you guys gonna be making Not today? Me. Not you. How many times have you been here? Zero. Zero times. Well, this is your first time. So hopefully it's a good one, right? You guys want to do a little trivia? Anyone? You guys look a, a very smart group. Anyone? No? No? Yes. yes? Wow. So, what is Jacksonville's oldest neighborhood? What year was it established? What was Springfield used before it actually became a neighborhood? What happened before 1869 historically? What, what, it was a big war. Anyone? No? Anyone? Yes? So yeah, so, yeah, sometimes I get a little bit carried away. You know, long-winded, so apparently uh, Sweet Pea was ready. You never know where he's gonna be ready, but he's ready to go, and when Sweet Pea says go, you gotta go. There are times when um, Dane's long-windedness uh, helps me, and there's times when it doesn't. It's sort of a double-edged sword. Uh, I've had times when it's saved my life, when there's things that are going on that are happening behind the scenes that aren't working out, and it's bought me time. Other times it's not so helpful. So Dane doesn't always start the field trips. It's um, whether you're the lucky group or not. I mean, if he walks through and he feels like doing a little trivia, he does a little trivia. Come on, 18, starting in 1860. It was probably the worst war for Americans, that's all, because it was pitted brother against anyone. Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> anyone? <laughs> Please, anyone? Is anyone out there? Brother. The Civil War, very good. Okay, no, you were there. You... That fire, for every closed door, there's an open what? Open window, right? And so the open window was is that people lost their homes in the great How do we fire. make him stop talking so I can get started? Where did they come? They came right here. So the All houses right. here were built between 1901. I was not really paying attention to what was going on with Dane. I was kind of doing my own thing, but um, Pete's stress level was ratcheting up and uh, he had enough of it. And so, um, I get the unfortunate position of sometimes playing the middleman between Pete and Dane. So I had to reel Dane back in. In 1930, I just heard an all right to my rear. <laughs> so he'd ask me to pull you away. He's getting nervous. <laughs> when he gets nervous, you know what I'm saying? So here's Sweet Pea. I'm going to try. You guys have been a great group. Right. Thanks. All right. Sorry about that. Dane's uh, ex extra talking is a double-edged sword. Sometimes it works out very well for me, and it's, there's been times where it saved me. Other times, it's not so helpful. Who likes candy here? <laughs> All right, because that's why we're here, right? Who, um, who likes taffy? No, not me. No? Well, we're gonna make hey chocolate. Uh, who wants to help me make a batch of taffy that you guys are gonna I take home with you? All right, because that's what we're doing today. Um, the most important ingredient is what? Sugar. So we're going to add some sugar to this pot. And then anytime you're cooking sugar, you're going to need at least a little bit of water. But we're going to use um, approximately two cups to four cups of sugar. Hey, Erica, you got some um, sweet boxes for me? Erica. Sometimes the orders get mixed up. Sometimes the note cards don't go inside of the with the with the orders. So they get mixed up a little bit and then you have to go back through the packages, open the boxes, find the order, put the card in and reseal them all over again. So sometimes it gets a little crazy. Well, maybe Dane, you know, because he moves too fast sometimes, so not paying attention, get the orders a little mixed up, so yeah, how that goes. Hey. Here's what I got for you. These are the totes. 
but Allison doesn't have the printing labels, the labels yet for these. Okay. I mean, I can still pack them. And, okay. Um... So I do have them. So okay. I'll just bring them all in because there's about 12. So she's okay. printed up the labels for me. All right. And these cards go with. Yeah. See, you have to find out which one the order is. So what she did was. She put the number on the back of them. I have some of these. And I'm sure they correspond with the last four. The last is this, three. Is this an Allison Berenger special? Yes. <laughs> Allison, how's your So you have to your... find the note. You have to find which one corresponds with it. There's two is points that the of reference three? pair. You can look there or you can read the actual note. OK. And it's already printed up for you. OK. Me. Yeah. Um, but this is the issue. I've got six printed and our internet just went out. <gasps> Come on, are, are you, you serious? Me? Are you serious? Well, so Dan, when you're we got to call up, IT and, and get them. Your IT, Barry. <laughs> no, I'm <not> IT. <laughs> we need to stir this. Now, one more ingredient we have to add before we cook. A lot of times at field trips we get uh, kids, adorable kids that like to interject. Um, we love it when the kids participate. It makes the field trip more fun for everyone. Pete loves that. And on most days he's able to roll with it. Some days when you know it's just a stressful time, you're dealing with your field trip, you have a big order pending or a lot to do, it can get um, a little tiresome. And Pete's uh, an artistic type, so he can, uh, he can get rattled fairly easily. And Sometimes when he gets off his game, it's kind of hard for him to get back focused. So um, in this particular instance, it looked like uh, Pete, you know, probably would have preferred a little less interjection, but nonetheless, he ended up doing a, a great trip. Are you putting the blue tissue in there with it? Yeah. And you're using bubble paper? Bubble wrap. Bubble wrap. Um, no, I'm using the, uh, the roll, right? That's what I have been using. Yeah, you have a... The butcher paper? Yeah. No, oh, no. Don't use that the thing. bubble wrap. Um, shipping should be, you know, the main thing is that the customer gets the package and they're happy with the package. So in my mind, you have to think long term, not just be on what you're doing at that very second and how to do it the fastest. You actually have to think about how the person who paid $40 for the chocolate receives it. So the frustration is that sometimes we get a little ahead of ourselves and we lose focus that we're selling a high-end gourmet product that needs to be packaged appropriately. These are sweet boxes. I wondered why we still have bubble wrap, because I thought I, you should have been going through it faster. I use the butcher paper for the hearts. Do you this? This is, this is more professional looking. Okay. And it's less damage on the, I love how especially the, on the, the baskets, Yeah. so it won't puncture them, because that butcher paper will puncture them. Oh my gosh, he put, Oh my goodness, butcher paper. Things change around here, uh, sometimes without my knowledge, and so um, some things that are in Allison's head sometimes don't always get out, which is okay. Um, but she called me on something, um, uh, as opposed to butcher paper, use bubble wrap. And of course, uh, we had never used bubble wrap before, but this is her claim. And so just to be nice and, you know, I, I love Allison very much. And you know, just to be nice and, you know, get through the Valentine's season, I said, absolutely, whatever you want. And so. This is intended for shipping. That's yeah. the purpose of it. What takes so long? It, it, just, it, it just takes longer to rip. It just, <laughs> it just, it just doesn't rip. It's just, <laughs> Why don't you cut it? Because it's just not easy. <laughs> well, it's not, it's so I, I just. I think if I get I you. Just, I'm really happy you're here, monitoring my my I'm every sure move. Sure you are. It's a big shipping day. I'm yeah. gonna get you some scissors. Okay, that would be good. With a scissors that, that would be good. That would be good. Get these shipped, and then we can okay. keep our butt butcher paper. Okay. All right. We, all right. We still we still should someone should go get butcher paper. Okay, but we could use the shipping materials for shipping and the basket materials for baskets. Oh my God. I got a wife at home. I got a wife at the store. The bubble wrap's uh, a new uh, development here. 
I was the first I've been told that bubble wrap is now part of the shipping procedure, so I am now uh, edified and informed. So we got the butcher paper. Let's see here. The phone ring. Oh, bubble wrap. I'd like to address Dane's bubble wrap comment because I have witnesses that we've been using bubble wrap since we opened in July of 2010. Yeah, yeah, Dane. There's rarely bubble wrap in the store, but there's always butcher paper. And there isn't anything written down that says bubble wrap. So. Well, bubble wrap, but we're addressing the comment that you said it's a new product. It's, it's not new. It's, it's been here. It's and new in that it's actually physically present in the store. And it's only one day shipping from Uline. So you could get it and it's, it's more professional. I think we should just agree that it will be the new thing. It's the new I, way. I, I think that's prudent. I think okay, it's wise. Perfect. Yeah. We're good. We are good. This is motor oil. What is it? No, it's our food color. It is, uh, <laughs> we, it's our natural color. It actually comes from spinach. Who smells key lime? You will in a minute. But the color actually comes from spinach. So, you guys ready? I believe natural candy is important uh, because there's nobody doing it right now. Um, as far as I know, um, it's, it's very limited. There's a niche for this. There's a market for it. Not everybody wants uh, artificial colors that are processed with, with uh, petroleum and coal and that sort of thing. Uh, I think people would prefer their colors to come from real food, and ours do. Uh, nobody really fully understands the effects of artificial colors. So uh, there's a lot of links to things that, that, that um, some problems that people uh, have that are traced to artificial colors. So it's not, we feel like it's important to provide people an alternative. You'll see uh, it's going to expand in size and it's gonna change color. We're gonna take this from a darker green to a lighter green. And that's because the air will be going in into it here. So let's try this and see how this works. Wow! Whoa, that's cool. That is, that's, that's what it's for. Uh, generally speaking, I love the field trips uh, because they make the day go by fast and there's always interesting, uh, you always see something interesting in a field trip. I've had field trips that are botched all the way from the beginning to the time the candy's pour on the table. But when the candy's on the table, something magic happens, usually, most cases, 99% of the time. It turns everybody around and everybody begins to, they get drawn into it, because it really is fascinating. Um, and I've done it a thousand times and I still enjoy it. But they're transforming the sugar into something that looks and feels it tastes totally different than what the, the ingredients were that you started with. And there's some kind of magic that sweeps over the room when that happens. Especially with the taffy or candy canes. Uh, it really is, uh, it is fun to watch. We're best known for our sea salt caramel. It's a caramel that's made in small batches and stirred by hand. Caramel flavor uh, evolves over time. It's, it occurs by cooking sugar together with dairy. And over time, there's a, a reaction that occurs, and that's where the flavor uh, comes from. 
we take our caramel after we finish cooking it and coat it with a light coating of sea salt. That really sets off the flavors and it brings in dimensions that you wouldn't otherwise taste simply by adding sea salt to the top of it. Um, it's what we're best known for and it's a very good caramel. It's one that is uh, most people would not attempt to make because uh, it takes time and you can't rush the process. It really has to, and you have to hand stir it in this particular case. So it really does make a difference. Candyman always gets his man. <laughs>